So I will try to do my best here. Um, the, all the concepts that I'm going to bring, it was based on the book from Leon Diniz. There is a J-level um, in our library. It's in Portuguese, though. But I really recommend if you want to know a little bit more deeper about the subject to, to read the entire book. We will not have time to, to talk about every single detail. But um, here we go. So we're going to well, talk about arts, and here are some ideas that I'm pretty sure most of you already um, heard about or saw or have in your mind somehow. So we all have this image of um, a little angel playing arps on, the, on heaven. <laughs> this is an ancient idea, and it may have some reality to it, and we are going to talk about this a little bit later. Um, also, we do have a lot of, uh, if you guys have the chance to read some spiritualist books, they will describe, especially if, uh, a, a discarnated spirit or a person that is about to discarnate, they will m many times mention about this beautiful song that they hear from um, from, from heaven, you know, from angels, and uh, they barely can describe how beautiful those musics are. Not, nothing we've really heard before in art, at least. Painting. There are some spiritist center, um, especially in Brazil, I think many of you have heard before, that some spirits will uh, manifest through painting. So that's a way that they will communicate with us as well. Architecture. Um, I don't know if all of you read the book Astro City or saw the book, but uh, there are other books also that uh, talks about it. But Astro City, Andrea Luis really talks about the buildings, and uh, there is a building, there's the hospitals, there's the administration building. It, it's pretty much a colony where there are different buildings which were planted somehow and working, right? Um, other books also will talk about parks, about gates, about portals. I mean, they were all planned somehow. So there is some kind of architecture in the spiritual side as well. In literature, we all um, pretty much know all the books from under deck. They were all dictated from the spiritual side. And they are the main, pretty much the main um, way to disseminate uh, the spiritism. So let's go to a few concepts that the book brings us. So, beauty is one of the divine attributes God has put into human beings, animals, and things this mysterious charm that attracts us, seduce us, captivate us, and fills our souls with admiration and sometimes with enthusiasm. So, well, this may be new for some of us, maybe not for all of us, but some of us. Beauty related to God, right? So let's take a moment here and think about a beautiful place that you guys have been to, or a beautiful moment in your life. A, a, a and I will bring here some of beautiful moments in place that I came up with. Maybe not all of them, but a few. <laughs> and um, I bet that who, you know, a motherhood is the one that really um, touched me, and I bet touched a lot of people too. So when we look at those places, or those uh, beings, or those moments, we can realize that they were all created by God. And when we try to express them through art, you know, those moments, those feelings, or those places, we are expressing just a tiny little bit part of God's work. So that makes me conclude that God is the biggest artist that we ever seen. Um, if you move forward and, um, and, and, and talk about um, spiritism, spiritism is, is going to bring us a much bigger range of inspiration for our artwork. For example, now our knowledge pretty much is the earth, maybe the universe that we don't know much about, and feelings and experience that we have in this in this life, right? When we start learning about spiritism, it comes the whole spiritual side that will open up this range of inspirations for our work. So 
So the purpose of art is the search and realization of beauty. It is at the same time the search for God, because God is the first, first source and the perfect fulfillment of physical and moral beauty. So let's take a moment here in this picture. And let's imagine um, the big light there is representing God, which is um, all the pure feelings, all the knowledge, all his creation, and all the beauty that we can ever experience, right? And these um, stairs are our path towards God. Every time that we get a little bit more intellectually or more evolved, we get a little bit closer to God, right? At the same time, we start getting a little bit more aware of his beauty or his work. Did you see that? Anyway. But um, one thing that made me think, like, how do we get better awareness, right? So I don't know if many of you guys know, I do live right close to a golf course, right? And um, one day I was driving home in this busy street, and there was this little turtle trying to get across the street um, to get to a little pond on the other side. And I stopped my car because the poor thing would be crashed pretty soon. It was a matter of time or minutes. And I stopped my car and I went there, picked her up, and I crossed her over and let her follow her way. And then I got in the car and that kept me, you know, I started thinking about it. And I go, what was in her mind, you know? Whatever <laughs> 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 makes sense, right? So, um, <laughs> so uh, probably what she could see, you know, in her limited vision was the pond on the other side. Or she knew about it, or she was going by instinct there, right? But her whole, whole world is just that golf course. She doesn't know anything better than that, right? So cars doesn't make any sense for her. She doesn't know what they are. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't know that the, the, <coughs> there are people inside of those cars that are going home, that are going to work, that are going to the grocery, the grocery store. They are bringing kids to school. There is all these um, things going on above the turtle that she could not, I don't think she understands. You know, she doesn't <laughs> 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 And uh, it's not just that street. I mean, there are many other streets in my city and you know, many other streets in Austin and all the suburbs. So things are much bigger than her little limited world right here. So then I think, well, what is above us? You know, is there something up there that we cannot see? that we cannot understand. And yes, there is. There's many more that we don't see. The same way the turtle could not understand what was going on in that little street. And if uh, you read the book, Workers of Eternal Life, one of the uh, mentors from Andrea Luisi does say that we are aware of one eighth of the reality that's going on with us here on Earth. So there's many more things up there for us to learn. So each time we get closer to God, we get more aware of the reality and his work. Um, how do we learn about <coughs> art? How do we learn to play an instrument? I think I have many people here that could tell me today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you learn, like, you start learning, and it's a process, right? I mean, you start the, from the basic, and it's a continuous process. So it is a continuous process through incarnation as well. So you start in a certain moment in your eternal life to learn the first steps. Uh, then you go to the spiritual side, you keep learning there too. If it's God's will and your will, it's a, that's how, how it continues. Then you reincarnate again, you keep learning, and then you go to um, spiritual side again, and that's a continuing process. So as we evoluted, um, as we evolved, moral, intellectually, we are also evo evolving uh, our skills. Make sense? <laughs> <laughs> so, art is a powerful me means of elevation and renewal. It is the font of the purest pleasures of the soul, embellishing and sustaining our lives while consoling us during our trials. So, when art is made with a pure inspiration and with evolved ideals, it is the same thing as a prayer. So we are praying to God. We are praying with our heart to God and to the higher spirits. And it will be heard from the higher um, levels in the spirituality. To produce something genius here on earth, I'm giving the 
clue here. <laughs> we need to transform ourselves. We need to learn and understand the superior life in the harmony of his work. We need necessarily to be closer to God. Um, one of the divine laws, it says that every time that we get a little bit better understanding of life of God, um, we go back to help those who didn't get there yet, right? So um, art has the power of touch the sense of the soul and uh, to touch our hearts. So art is many times used as a tool for those spirits to help the others in a, in a less um, evolved situation than we are. It doesn't need to be far, you know, behind us. It can be just a little bit behind us, but we, we go back and we can use uh, art to touch their hearts so they will wake up for um, for uh, to this understanding and trying to um, uh -huh. develop this will of uh, going after God. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are we going too fast? <laughs> we have time. Okay. So art is also used um, to help spirits in um, to imitation and also to inspiration. So let's say that I'm trying really hard to accomplish something. So and there is a somebody that master um, or is better than I am, right? I'm gonna get there and try to imitate what he does, and try to see if that thing will touch my heart somehow and help me out to get there. Or um, through inspiration, we we have somebody that we really like produce some really beautiful work, and we will try our best, you know, to get or to understand what he's doing so we can get there as well. There is also um, communication between the different <coughs> levels in the spirituality to help uh, spirits. So let's say that I'm trying really hard to develop painting somehow, you know, and I've been trying and trying and I really have this good will to do it. So God may allow me to visit higher places and see their work, see how they are painting. And that will help me when I come back to my place to develop it more and more and get closer or get inspired by them. You mean in dreams? No, uh, well, pretty much here talks a little bit for spirituality, but it could be through dreams as well. You know, like, um, I think I was more thinking about like in the spirit, you are in the spiritual side and you're allowed to go to the higher levels. But it could be through dreams as well, and that happens. You know, it could be taken to, uh, during your dreams to a certain place, so when you wake up, you're inspired. And Lucia, when you said uh, about helping through the art, I was trying to think here, um, I guess because art, is, there is a kind of a universal thing about it, right? So when you touch hearts through the art to be able to connect to other spirits that are, when you said they're in more of a need uh -huh. to be helped. So that's, we, we touch their hearts because uh, through art we are able to, it's almost having like a common language that if the person is touched by beauty, right? Uh -huh. Then uh, you kind of attract that spirit to something, to get out of uh, a problem or get out of uh, a, situation a situation that, that is there. may be stuck there, uh -huh. right? You may be stuck in that situation and then you touch and um, and we're going to talk a little bit further, but I mean, once you touch their heart, mm -hmm. and, and he feels that 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 power, mm -hmm. you know, he will be willing to to go after that fount of energy, you know, because it looks good. It, it feels, feels good. good. It feels good, mm -hmm. you know. He may yeah. not understand gotcha. intellectually, but he's feeling it. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so let's go a little bit about each art here. So, for example. And um, architecture will reach the sense. And how does it reach? When you walk in a cathedral, for example, right? Uh, the paintings, paintings, the music, the, the, the big ceilings, I mean, you automatically have a peace feeling and you're gonna respect and come down and talk low and have a certain respect for that place. When you walk in a busy place, noisy, and you know, you just want to move, you want to keep going, you know, you just don't, you react in a different way. 
right? I mean, if, if there's a place with a lot of yellows, reds, and you know, bright colors, you don't feel comfortable staying there for too long. So that's how architecture will reach your sense. So it, it has this power. So how it works in the spiritual side, uh, art in general, not just architecture, but art. So the main thing is manipulating ma matter the same way as we do on Earth. So to build a house here, I will get um, bricks and concrete and wood and put together, right, and make my house. In the spiritual side, you're gonna use the matter that's available there, which is much more lighter and thinner than we have here. So um, architecture on Earth is a result of multiple skills. So I will need um, somebody to come and pour the foundation, I need somebody to come and, and do all the uh, structures, I might come and do the sidings, a carpenter in, in the end to do all the finishes and, and, and cabinets. Well, on the spiritual side, it's just the result of one person's work. So it's a matter of the artist's will to produce or destroy his uh, buildings, his architecture. Um, on Earth, also, the architecture is really steady, static. So it should not move, right? I mean, it's there and it's rigid. On the spiritual side, the matter has life. So there's movement, there's flexibility, there's transparency, there are multiple colors, you know, however the artist wants to produce it. Um, kind of hard to see. Well, if most of you don't know or know, I mean, I, I do design house for a living, you know, I'm an architect. <laughs> so, so if this sounds like incredible, you know, it usually takes me six months to a year to see the result of my work, you know, to see if I did some mistake and maybe correct the next project. You know, if, if this I can create and just create and then see and experience, um, but it sounds, you know, just fantastic. Yeah, but of course, I will have to learn how to do there. That there, and of course. It's through the, the thought? Through it's the through the thoughts. It's through the thoughts and um, through your feelings as well, right? Mm -hmm. Which more feelings you put, I mean, I think better results it. you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Let's go painting. Well, painting is, is going to reach the spirit. And I think we have a, a, some feeling of that. I mean, most of us did put a, pic, a family picture on top of our desk at work or we get an ocean view picture on, on one of our rooms because just feel relaxed and we like to look at that, right? So that is affecting our spirit somehow. Um, on colors, uh, the author described that the range of colors available in the spiritual side is amazing. You know, there's nothing compared to what we know here. And uh, that also made me think, like my brother, when I was a teenager, my brother used to tell me that to make me happy, it, it, it was just to give me a color pencil box, right? <laughs> but I think now I'm getting a little bit more demanding, and I want a spiritual <laughs> color pencil box. <laughs> but anyway, the same thing happens, is the artist wills, you know, he will create and destroy the art the way uh, as he wants. The artist creates through the, his thoughts, so pretty much, uh, as most that I can understand is he will, when we have a, a thought, uh, we will project this thought in kind of a screen on the spiritual side. So that's the same process, he will create his images, you know, he will think about it, feel that, that emotion and that feelings, and he'll create the, 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 on those screens that can be seen in the spiritual side. Um, can, I, can I say something? When you mentioned the colors, uh, it was interesting. I remembered uh, when somebody told me that people that are from Alaska, for example, they look at the white and they are able to see the different tones of white. Which for us, for me, white is white, right? Except the color that we know there's the off white, there, you know, we, we can think about. And, uh, but they know in relation to the nature, right? I mean, there's more water, more, it's drier, it's, uh, or, it's yeah, pure yeah. white or whatever. And so that made me think, because when I thought of colors, like you're saying, in the spiritual side, having other colors, you know, I can imagine the spectrum getting so much, the more we are able to, like you said before, right, to open our eyes, really see. It's a matter of how we see the reality. The reality is there, but if we 
don't see it, then uh, it's, it, you know, it, it goes without being perceived, right? It, it definitely, yeah, it does. And, um, and I don't know also, you know, uh, how much we see, we perceive those letters with our eyes, or how much we see those mm -hmm. colors with our feelings. It's, our feelings. it's, it's more you know. holistic. Yeah. yeah, so the more evolved, yeah. the more yeah. sensible we are to... Mm -hmm. uh, I think even music, everything you feel with a whole body. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not yeah. just your eyes, per se. Yeah. Yeah. So, once the artist goes to the spiritual side, he usually will bring with him his inspirations from Earth, so he can produce images that he knew while he was on Earth. He will produce work that he didn't have time to produce on Earth. He will bring work from his masters, just to inspire him to keep going on this um, uh, journey, pretty much. Literature and lecture. So that's the main um, most used as spiritism dissemination. It's the easiest way to transfer thoughts, ideas, and feelings. In 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 a lecture, you also have uh, the advantage of bringing emotions, if that's the case. And the merit on this particular art is to make people think. Is to provoke. Um, feelings and emotions uh, as novel as possible. It's um, transmit harmony and especially divine thoughts. Interesting this all the time. There you go. Well, I don't know if you guys had a chance, another good book to, to, to understand a little bit more also is um, The Writer's House, A Casa do Escritor, from Patricia. And um, when she was on Earth, she was a journalist. And then when she goes to the spiritual side, she wants to keep writing. So she goes to this colony where they keep teaching, you know, she keeps learning about it on the other side. And eventually she decides to be, um, to write a book to mediumship here and learn. So she had to go to classes to do that also, to know exactly what, what she could um, dictate or not on those books. And also, one interesting thing that she mentioned in that book is that Allan Kardec has many more books written on the spiritual side that were never published on Earth. And we just get access once we are ready to read them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> is that a teaser for us to look over there? <laughs> <laughs> Luciana, I remember, I think it's on this book too, that they say there's a class, and she goes to the class, and a lot, there was a, like, a group of students and some didn't make, right? And even on the spirit world, they want to write like on through, you know, mediumship, but they just couldn't do it. They went to do some other work. Other work because, oh yeah, they, you're right. It, they it just was just them. not their thing. They try and, and I said, no, this is That's not, not It's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good, you know, there's trying and errors also, right? I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be, you know, painter or musician, you know, it's just, or you, you, you want it, and I, I think you have to have the skill as well, you know, something, um, yeah. you know, some, something. Yeah, I don't know if you get feelings. there, I don't, I, I'm sorry if I no, 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 but I talk to the kids, like sometimes they see smart artists, but it's bad artistic stuff. You know, you see on TV, on movies, and books, and it's like, yeah, that person is very smart, but where does inspiration come? It, it, he's yeah. not using intelligence for something good. Um, so I don't know if this book ever gets, gets into there. that. Because no, you're showing the nice it part of but art. But it's interesting, <laughs> and that's something. No, it, it is. I mean, the book brings a lot of things, but it leaves a lot of, a lot of questions, too. Okay. And one thing it doesn't say, but... Um, for example, each art is just like science too. You know, it can be used in a good exactly. way, or it can be used in a bad way. So it's our choice, you know. And but what is going to stay here? What is going to, um, like I said, be genius out there? You yeah. know, means what survive. What is going to survive here? Is that we're still going to time? To yeah, and there is some sort of architecture, music in the inferior zones, but <coughs> they're not necessarily to be. In the beauty side, the beautiful oh, side. We shouldn't yeah. even call art, but yeah. Well, it definitely the book brings us 
you know, this teaser of willing to see, and you know, it talks about really evolved areas, and, uh, and that's the goal. And that's the goal, you know, and it, that's wonderful. I mean, I, I really suggest you guys you try to read one of Leon Denis' books. He is really like. He talks about the spiritual side in this incredible way that we really want to go and see. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have to be careful. I mean, it's not everything like that. There's yeah. the lower zones, which we may not. Well, like you said, it's the goal, and, you know, yeah. getting there. <laughs> getting there. So music is going to touch the soul. Yes. And, uh, and music, more than anything, is the closest thing that we have to the spiritual side. And the reason is it's the only art that we have in art that has movement. Everything else on Earth is really static, mm -hmm. and on the other side, everything has movement. So this is the goals that we get, even though the books still say that we have a really limited and poor version of music here on Earth compared to the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. The music will touch the soul, and um, like I mentioned before, once we we do, we are touched. That will to increase. I mean, increase our desire to. Evolve towards the eternal fountain, towards to God. You know that that feeling is there. Uh, on the spiritual side, there is not a real instrument, so mm. the music's pretty much uh, played by something that we understand as hearts, but it seems as mu much bigger there than what we have now. So, and that's how it's played. It is again just like a prayer, you know, and. Um, this will create musical waves, and the other spirits is, are going to feel through their bodies, through their spiritual body, the pure spirit, the music, all the music, all the, those waves. So the more evolved spirits, uh, they can experience much more fine and subtle um, sensations, so more beautiful the songs are. Uh, music also has a therapeutic power, and it mentions here, especially harps, and human voices. So the little angel playing harps is not completely um, out of clue, you know, there's something there. It doesn't explain why, but it, there is something there. <laughs> and um, the, the book also talks about some, um, sometimes they do have like parties on heaven, <laughs> which it sounds funny, right? But uh, if they say that the, 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 if all the spirits get together to sing and glorify God, and thank God for everything, you know, for all. And they said, and when that happened, it's so strong that all those vibrations, all those musical waves I felt, even on the lower spiritual levels. And um, <coughs> I mean, I, I'm not sure about Earth, and many times he says that Earth, because we're so materialized, it's gonna stop those those waves. It goes like do 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 do. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's music, it's very subjective, because what may lift you up may not do anything for me and vice versa. Yeah, it depends on your background. Right, and, and so I may listen to a sonata from Beethoven that just brings tears to my eyes and really lifts me, or if I walk yeah, into a cathedral right. and I hear a choir singing, uh -huh. I feel like I'm in a special place, and I feel lifted. Uh, well, and, and the book does mention too, and, and the, I bet the music, musicians know better <laughs> than I do, but uh, there are some notes that we create, like a, I have PS feeling, there are other mm -hmm. notes that we create like a more of, of sad feeling, you know, and, and those different levels may affect you more than, than Tanya, than, than Beth, mm -hmm. than, than Bob, you know, like I think each of us will be because I mean, even though it may be limited and poor, there's still music that can lift us oh, yeah. to yeah. our higher. It's all relative, yeah. right? Yeah. It's all relative. When we say, uh, you know, we can have wonderful music here, we just don't, you know, by comparison to the what it feels in the spirituality as we get more evolved, it still feels, you know, poor, you know. Mm -hmm. But definitely everything is in evolution, so as... Well, I, I think when we say poor, it's like you're comparing, I don't know, a piece of Picasso, well, a piece of a, a master in art to a child, two years old yeah. child. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. what I, I, yeah, I understand from poor, you know, it's just... Maybe it, even... It hasn't been yeah. developed yet. Yeah, maybe even because of the, the senses that are being evolved. 
because mm -hmm. we don't have a materialized materialized body in a sense that we're being carrying our, our spirit through uh, with our pair spirit and we get to a evolved a more evolved place so the feelings not you're not going to just listen to it but you're going to yeah. feel every vibration yeah, in the yeah, sense of every uh, hurts from that that vibration everything so I'm, I don't know yeah, that will be beyond our comprehension yeah. Andre Luis says uh, when he uh, listens to some music that yeah. was not the way we listen he couldn't even explain because I, it's not like through my ears that it's I'm listening like to it I can yeah. feel it yeah. so we can imagine that something that already touches our hearts through just our ears <laughs> imagine feeling so that some yeah. waves are are coming to us through a different meaning. You know, yeah. In yeah. this case, the fairy spirit, or mm -hmm. since we don't, I guess we don't, don't use the ears to hear yeah. the music or through vibration. So we, we feel it. Because, uh, you know, deaf people can also feel music. Exactly. Yeah. Through the vibration. Yeah. vibration. So that gives us an idea, but, you know, we, we, we really, uh, it does, and of course, because all the levels of evolution that we all, you know, have on Earth and stuff, that, you know, people will be touched differently, like you said. Mm -hmm. And the kind of music, and so it doesn't mean that music that will touch some, you know, like it, like we talked about the inferior zones, there'll be some some songs there that, uh, well, some people enjoy it. Does not necessarily mean uh, will be a celestial song, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but, um, you know, taste is different than taste. I think that's the point, right? Different taste doesn't mean that you know something is really a pure, in a more purified way, right? <coughs> People have different tastes, mm -hmm. but still, what is good is good, what is bad is bad, right? <laughs> and uh, that's the only one thing that every single religion in the planet has in common. Yeah. All of them involved music. Yes. Mm -hmm. In no way, either drums or singing or organ, every single religious manifestation will always involve music. Yeah, the art of music, yeah. And then the musical manifestation on the other side is, is huge too. Mm -hmm. yeah. More than I, I believe, than the other arts as well. Yeah. It gets to a point where when you study something that Mozart wrote, he could listen to everything way before he was writing it. So yeah. you really get to a higher level, you know, when you're as open as this, and you can listen much more than you can listen while you're within three dimensions. Mm -hmm. so. we, even have, we even have in history some composers that wrote huge pieces when, when they were already deaf. <laughs> <laughs> they just wrote the music <laughs> and felt the vibration in the, in the keys when they were being they played. Their minds when they were listening. Exactly. Oh, yeah. they, they were actually feeling in their body the vibration of the, the okay. music yeah. instead of throughout Most the years. Was no, Beethoven. Beethoven. Beethoven never heard. Yeah. Beethoven, 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 Beethoven never heard that. Symphony when he was deaf, yeah. Well, let's. Yeah. Um, this came from um, a different book. It's extracted from the book, The OK Evangelization of Spirits. And in this book, they say how um, art is used as a therapy to modify feelings and thoughts. And uh, it helps the person who is using this type of therapy to understand how they're feeling, what they're feeling, and how they will react to that. Uh, theater is one um, also being used in therapy and aim to change the mental behavior. Um, it helps discover the sensibility in the spirits, develop feelings, and help to express them. There's something here. But in general, um, all all the arts are used as a, a therapy. And um, is it going right here? I don't know. It's going to be way worse. It's it's changing here, but it's not changing here.
Okay, inspiration, and then we're going to talk a little bit of what you, you, you <coughs> mentioned before. There are two different ways that we can um, get inspiration. One is from past experience from other reincarnations that we bring in this life and we just keep working. Another one is from, I mean, when we are in the spiritual side, we've, we have been working close to other friends, so when we incarnate, those friends will be around us, helping us to develop our work. And the third way is if we, our willing is, is sincere and pure, and we're really trying hard and doing our part, through our prayers, we can reach higher spirits that we use our uh, incentive that is already there to inspire us through art. So if we get many big m m artists out there, and, and, and here's just some examples, they do mention in many, many times where they do talk about how God participated in their lives and their work, and how they were inspired many times through dreams, through moments, and um, that's how you mentioned. Now many, many people were already even deaf, but they had this inspiration, so they have this help from the other side, or they knew much more than he knew before, you know. Um, so here are some, some of their words, but also in the book they talk a little bit more um, in detail, you know, a little bit more how this inspiration would come, and most of them would come like a, you know, a bomb, you know, it would reach them and they could not wait and stop. They had to produce right there, you know, because it was so strong. Um, and that's one case of Harry Haynes. He is a writer, a German writer. And, um, well, mm -hmm. get a moment to read. You can read. So, okay, Mozart, <laughs> one of his words, one of his uh, famous words. I thank my God for gracious granting me the opportunity of learning that death is the key which unlocks the door to our true happiness. Well, he's mentioning God and he knows that there is a spiritual side, but we all know that Mozart was a um, child prodigy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I prized this word before. <laughs> and uh, uh, he, he showed really understanding knowledge since he was a child. Uh, Vicente van Gogh would say, I dream of, my, of painting and then I paint my dreams. Mm -hmm. Beethoven also, um, also mentioned about how, how he would have these bombs of inspirations in, in, uh, to his work and also he mentions how he has a knowledge of a spiritual sign. Mm -hmm. Michelangelo also says, even though he was uh, an old, older than most of the average artists, he really believed that that was his mission to do his work, from, and that was inspired by God. And Harry Haynes also will come talk about his inspiration moments where you know, he had to stop everything and sit down and write because he was being inspired and he needed to write. Yeah. yeah, Michelangelo had something similar, said something similar to Van Gogh when he said that they asked him how he, the statue of David, uh -huh. how did he get to it? He said, I imagined that David, and I remove all the rock that doesn't belong mm -hmm. to David. Oh wow. yeah, there was, yeah. I saw something like yeah. that. Yeah, you see, would see a, a piece stone. of stone uh -huh. that would somehow transform, yeah. So he removed everything that didn't belong to the statue. So it's not exactly, and that's your statue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of goes along cool. with the dream. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I um, saw that too. But anyway, and, and, and it's extensive, you know, there's even more description. I just didn't want to get into I think we would not have time to get into that too sure. much. But that would be a, a whole new lecture here if we want. It would be nice. But I did bring an example, and I thought it would be nice to bring an example, like, that is here with us, you know, it's a life. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that we could, we could talk and see her work and see or you know, go to YouTube and see this girl talking. It's, 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 it's really nice. And she is one, another child prodigy, and uh, she's part of the American Association of uh, Child Prodigies. And um, <coughs> well, Ariane started, I mean, when she was three years old, she wake up one day and said like, oh, I dream, and uh, I thought you died, you know. And her family was uh, completely atheist, so they didn't believe really in God or anything. They would not go to church, they never talked about God or prayer or anything at home. 
And they were homeschooled, so they, she didn't even have like a friend at school that would tell her something. So they were pretty much living at home, homeschooled, and, um, and, and no interaction as well with a, a church or any kind of religion. So she started at two years old before she starts uh, sketching on a paper about the place that she, she was during her dreams or about uh, faces that she saw. With six year, six, as, at six years old, she started uh, painting oil and um, acrylics. Seven, she started writing poems that usually she would learn through her dreams. Um, well, needless to say, I mean, she converted the whole family. Nowadays, this girl is around 18 years old. The whole family is Christian and uh, really believe in what she was experienced. And she had such a conviction. You can see on YouTube, she is uh, six years old. No, she wasn't that young. She was found, she, Oprah found her when she was already eight or nine years old. And she talks with such conviction of God that she didn't do this alone. And she was inspired at every step by God and by her friends, spiritual friends. Did you have Christ there? Yeah. What she, she, she painted? How much she No, did you, you have the, the, uh, painting the, the painting of Christ, of Christ that she did? Of what? Christ? Christ. Jesus. 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 Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 So I, I put her, and it wasn't the best picture, but just to see, I mean, it wasn't like a, a yeah. tiny little picture that yes. she painted. But look the size, you know, the girl learned herself. Yeah. Yeah. Being at home and, and buying paints, you know, and uh, she just trying and um, she had this story what she was about doing. Uh, behind all the painting and everything, right? I'm sorry. She have a story ab about the painting. Yeah, every the painting. Sto yeah. every paint that she does, yeah. she usually writes a poem really about it. And usually those poems are telling about what she dreamt, what she learned in her dreams, and before she started painting. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I mean, she's not the only child out there that is bringing yeah. this whole knowledge in art, but it's definitely interesting to take a look, you know, and see. This is, um, one thing that I think is interesting about this picture, and uh, the name of it, Prince of Peace. We just finished uh, one book from Andrea Luis, um, The Greater World, and two parts of the book, they mention God as the Prince of Peace. I thought it was an interesting huh. connection. Um, but anyway, and again, I don't believe God has exactly this face, I, I, I'm pretty Jesus. sure, Jesus. well, she says that it's God, she says it's God's face. So I believe it's more like a spiritual friend that is close to her and show in God's, in God's name. Yeah. So, but if but she's anyway. Christian, she believes, if she's a yeah. Christian, she believes yeah. that the Trinity yeah. is Father, yeah. Son, Yeah, she doesn't belong to any religion per se, she just uh -huh. believes no, 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 she's non-denomination. She's non-denomination, but she believes in what she was she learned through Yeah, she's giving the name of God for the spirits that are inspiring Yeah, 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 yeah. So she says that that's like how most, Because when, <laughs> when they told her to paint that, uh, she said, God told me to paint it. And I asked him, how I'm going to paint it? Because I never saw Christ. How? I'm going to yeah. do that. So a few days later, somebody knocked on her yeah. door and she... That was his model. Yeah, the model. She mentioned yeah. that every time that she yeah. had to paint something and she goes, well, I don't have the model, let me pray. Yeah. And she said every time it was just a matter of being patient, somebody would knock on my door and that was my model yeah. that I needed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this was her face, her first paint when she was discovered. was the, Her first paint sold, she sold for $10,000 $10, when she was eight years old. And uh, that journey is it's, it's interesting. Like she said that this place that is in the background of the picture is one of the most beautiful places that she hasn't been. So she says that in, during her dreams, she would be taken to different planet, planets and worlds and uh, to different situations, to different people. She would have learned. So it's, it's pretty amazing how um, she described uh, her experience, her mediumship experience. He also. Um, level of details that she put in all her paintings, but also she described the whole whole of uh, Guard Angel, that somebody there holding for you and, and you know, caring for you and um, whatever was um, taught her during her dreams. And it's kind of cute. And in the end, she goes like, uh, sometimes they allowed us to get hurt according to God's law, and I don't remember why. Because I probably should have <laughs> forgotten the rest of it. But it's, it's kind of interesting to see. I, I encourage you to check on her as well. 
again, she's not the only one, but it's one interesting definitely, um, um, example. So, and um, that's it. I hope we brought you guys a little bit interesting in the subject, maybe a little bit hope, maybe a little bit uh, willing to get there. <laughs> we can all get there together, right? One day, and we're going to play together, I guess. We're in the middle of a place like this, we're good. There <laughs> <laughs> you go. Any questions? I was I was thinking about um, the theater when you when you spoke about theater uh -huh. and how you said that it help you know it helps with um, understanding feelings and it's also very therapeutic and you know with intimacy and all of that and yeah I agree with that so much and some there is an approach in therapy in psychology today the drama therapy it's which is the, the the marriage of therapy and theater as a way of healing and self-exploration, and I, I work with that, so I thought that was, yeah. Yeah, it's, the only thing they say there is like, you should really be aware of what you're doing, because you can make it worse than, yeah. yes, you know, no, but always. So, but it's a way of, you know, making the person and uh, that's true. more self-confidence, or learning about themselves, and, and yeah. And and uh, one thing they mentioned about that is like, playing a whole model, you know, if I'm playing somebody that maybe I'm not, but it's a little bit better than I am, make me stop and think about myself and maybe try to get there, you know, uh, those feelings, those better feelings. Mm -hmm. And I agree with, you know, being careful with what you're doing, you know, because it does open up so much, yeah. And girl, you have much more experience than, more than, <laughs> than I do. I'm just no, 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 but yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah. I know that's really part of your profession. Isn't there also the, uh, the therapy, uh, you know, psychology, through painting, right? Yeah, art, yes, yeah, art, art, art therapy. Yeah, yeah, you use with all yeah. sorts of therapy. Yeah, art therapy. You know, touching your feelings and your psych, psychic side. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so a lot of things with kids. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And there's start of kids with Yeah, and then mm -hmm. goes to the, to the theater, <laughs> drama therapy, but also like painting or yeah. a bad music too. You know, music will change your stage of feelings, you know, mm -hmm. from sad mm -hmm. to happy. Yeah, yeah. Especially like when they're little that they cannot really express with words, words. I think then that's the time that they really draw and you can tell a lot from that, right? And, and yeah, and, and like what you said before, like art touching the heart, you know, the way it touches the heart, mm -hmm. because sometimes the, the, you know, verbal therapy, you know, psychoanalysis and all of that, it is good, but sometimes it does not touch the heart. So if a child, you know, if you're drawing or if you're engaged in theater or if, if there is music around, I think it, it goes it goes further. You know, it touches the heart and it touches the soul too. So uh, according to Andrea Luis, we're reading a lot of Andrea Luis in the book club. I, I do recommend you guys. But they say that that's the only way to cure mental illness is through the heart. I agree. I mm -hmm. agree. It's touching the heart. Yeah, because the words are so that you know. You really need to be ready to listen and to, uh, you know, that. Sometimes you just don't want to. And if you're not exactly, if you're not ready for that, it's not going to touch your heart intellectually speaking. You have to find yeah. another way to reach out. Right? One other part there that you I saw, and I don't know if you, you, you know, we talked too much about it, that I thought was cool, was the art in the sense of consoling. Right, uh -huh. the beauty that God, the present that God gave us, uh, bringing all this in a way that even though we are going through still, you know, this world of uh, you know trials and still with so many difficulties and sufferings, you know, but the beauty is already there, even if, relatively speaking, even if it's not as wonderful as it is as we get as to be pure spirits. But it's already so nice, like you said, you know, the, the beauty is there and help us go through and elevate our, our hearts and our thoughts and, and um, so I thought that was, was nice. Um, and even here, like when we're having the flute therapy, the, the passes and we, and we put that in the, the music, you know, it gives us that 
it, it takes us somewhere else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Let's yeah. put yeah. this yeah. way. And in well, the nature I, there is, you know, you see the, the gosh, you know, the art, to the colors in nature that you can, you know, replicate and, mm -hmm. and paper or in a painting or the sounds of you know the wind and the plants the animals the, the oceans, the oceans. Yeah. Yeah. I mean if you right, yeah. start paying attention in nature not in the city it's hard you have all the other <laughs> stuff but start looking at the sky when there's no light you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, on the way and just sit by the ocean when it, that's all you hear I mean it's amazing if you're inspired. Uh, well, yeah, the book doesn't say much for there. I think there's a lot to be explored still in the subject. And, and unfortunately, I mean, there's not much literature for us yeah. to, to read, you know, because it's so, like, such a big subject. It's always so spread it, out. It's right? so always spread out in every sense of the spiritism, yeah, more than we yeah. imagine, I guess. But there's not much literature available for us in the sense. So the book brings a lot of information. But it also gives us leave us with a lot of questions. You know, what what could we know more about this or that? Mm -hmm. And I think we get close, like um, Beth was saying, we get closer to God through the beauty of, you know, the nature in general. You you don't really have to praise God in another way. Um, more powerful than that mm -hmm. to uh, appreciate the appreciation the of this beauty, natural beauty of yeah. natural beauty we have. Yeah, yeah and we forgot to do that you. most of the most time. Of the time. Yeah. yeah, and like you said, I mean, we're in this book, right? Yes. It's hard yeah. to do. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. but you know, here, just sometimes people will post those sunsets, or if you're just driving and look at the sunsets, there, it's like, whoa. One beautiful thing about Austin, and Bob yeah. mentioned that all the time, like San Diego too, I mean, there is a beautiful nature that is available here. That mm -hmm. all this the is and you yeah. see. You see, mm -hmm. in, in close to my house, sometimes I'm driving home, and we see those, I don't know, thousands of birds just yeah. flying by, you know, once, mm -hmm. and just stop, and wow, you know, like it's yeah. just a nature, uh, <coughs> show or concert right there and we sometimes mm -hmm. don't stop to yeah, see it. Yeah, when you see it and you see animals running here and yeah, a little yeah. bee or a little squirrel. I mean, yeah, you have to be aware. Sometimes we're so busy, we're not yeah. paying yeah. attention. Yeah. 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 But there's yeah. moments that like, oh, yeah, that is nice. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're talking about art and spiritism, not always is beauty. We're not talking about connecting with spirits, not always you connect your Higher. good spirits, mm -hmm. not always. We may okay. connect also depending on our energy to not so evolve the spirits, but what I'm trying to show here is that it can very much be the connector between you and the spiritual world in whatever level. level. Yes. Whatever level, yes. what you're painting, what you're listening to, mm -hmm. what you're reading, it mm -hmm. can very much attract and even connect you to you know let's say just friends <laughs> invisible friends in whichever level they are right yeah, yeah uh, i think patricia's uh, book also talks about, about that yeah, yeah. one book that we just read from andrea Luis is the um Obreiros. the Workers of eternal life which the, he goes to visit one of those colonies that's really really, really close to earth you know, it's really a heavy place still. And uh, why, when he walks in this corner, he looks around, and he doesn't say, but he thinks, you know, and his mentors kind of get him. It's like how he looks around and say, wow, this, this place is not pretty. And I mean, he, he doesn't specify what he's seeing, but you know, most of the colonies have buildings or, or, or nature somehow. So this whole part was not beautiful per se. You know, it was a pretty, <coughs> not a bad place. It was just a, a First level up. <laughs> 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 it was not good either. Again, there. Just, yeah, people that were realizing that they and they had good will to help a little bit, but they were not. They were still far from being good. But anyway, there is. You're right, Andrea. I mean, there is this, and I bet. Uh, and I discussed today with. Tiny a little bit. I bet if you go to lower places, is now that they're not so good, not good at all. I guess the probably they have their music there as well, okay. which may be more like noisy, you know, or, or more primitive. More yeah. primitive in yeah. a way, but which 
still there's something good about it because it brings those, pe those people together. Yeah. Well, I'll give an example of that in, a, in the other side, in the bad side, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know how sometimes the, the sound, of course, the piano, the pattern of the sound almost hypnotize, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we were studying the situation where in the inferior zones they use that doom, doom, uh -huh. doom, that, that pattern really to keep those other spirits in I'm control. Thinking. Uh -huh. So yeah. Yeah. you yeah. kind of lose your power of thinking just from that sound being repetitive in your, in your mind. So that's another way of using, I mean, it's not necessarily art, let's say, but uh, the, we're talking about uh, the sounds and the, the, you know, also the, the lack of light in the inferior zone. So then you don't see the color. So we sometimes, when you're uh, talking to a spirit that is coming from those places, the first thing they notice if they're they brought is the light. You know, you know, we have even to go slowly because you know, if your eyes are not used to the light. It can hurt, right? So you go, and, well, every time we turn on the light, yeah. you feel it. Uh, and they will, you know, they will feel the, the, how, what they're missing, right? Oh, the sun, the light, the beauty, the flowers. The, so that beauty that we take it for granted is also something that if we are not in the, you know, if, you know, those who put themselves because of guilt, because of um, all sorts of bad feelings, you know, in places that mentally is re is in this inferior zone, they lose this capacity while they're there, temporarily, of course. And that's, uh, again, through the beauty sometimes, they're not listening to the words. You're trying to say, why don't we do this? Come on. It, but suddenly, if you say, but look at the, 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 the flower, look at this place, look at the sun, and they start really seeing that, that is the beauty that connects them. They, they want that, because we all want that. But we want to, think, to search for that thing in our hearts. The turning point is when they don't just see, they feel it in they their hearts. Heart. And that's the turning point for a spirit who is suffering yeah. to get help. Right? Because they, they, they let they let themselves to be helped because that, that's all it, it takes, right? When we uh, we want to help somebody, the person does not want to be helped. There's nothing we can do. But the moment that we can reach their hearts, and that can be through the beauty, through you know the music, through the the love, the affection, and this, then they say, "Oh, I I think I'm ready to be helped," and that is the turning point. And um, and we're all like that because we we there's there are certain things in our in our hearts, and uh, it was very interesting this theme for me because it made me think how um, you know when we talk about simply the beauty because art is the representation okay. of beauty of this the divine uh, gift to us. And uh, we most of the time take it for granted, right? And that it's, but it's a good point to think that uh, um, we, we, this is the consoling point that can bring us together and, and take us all together forward. Uh, I have a question, I'm a little confused, I think. <coughs> you were talking about uh, primitive spirits or primitive music? I'm talking about inferior zones, you know, remember that we... So on a spiritual level. A spiritual level. Okay. Yeah. So when we, we, we know that not... We, in the spiritism, we... Uh, is that okay? You, you no, know? that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're <laughs> it's her time, so I don't... <laughs> no, I, I think it, pretty much it's... Yeah, case. in spiritism, what we believe? We don't believe in hell, right? What we believe is that there's different zones in the spirituality that depend on our degree of evolution. <laughs> when we die, we, our minds, our feelings, our thoughts of, uh, you know, guilt or remorse or um, all sorts, or even thinking that we don't deserve something, we can be attracted to different, I'm calling zones, right? Different levels, right? 
And uh, uh, what I'm saying is, these places, they have different characteristics, right? So the places Lucilla described, it, like she said, they were more talk about the colonies and places that are already where we are looking, we are searching, like the Nosular, not the Astro City, or places where it's not super evolved, but at least there are there's nature, there are buildings, there is art, people learning, people searching, right? So that's one place. And other places where our minds, if I think I deserve to be in, in mud because I don't deserve, I, I did something wrong and I believe that I'm going to hell because I did that, I put myself in my mind and that's where I'm attracted to, to, to those inferior zones. And there, so if I think I have to be in some place like that, Guess how these places will look like? Not beautiful, not light, not no nature will be as demonstrated in uh, in you know the representation of hell. Not necessarily in fire, but in you know not a good place to be. The the we will let ourselves be part of groups of people that feel the same way by affinity, and therefore. Uh, these places are all the result of the mental. When she talked about the buildings being built by our thoughts, the same way we build beautiful buildings if our thoughts are in that mindset, we also, if my mindset is in the inferior side, what, guess what? I'll be building caves and I'll be mud and I'll be, you know, like in the Nosula in the beginning where Andrea Luis goes to, that kind of place, dark, not not. Because I think I think in my mind what what I was, and I think it's my misrepresentation or, or as well. I, I was thinking about the Aborigines in Australia, mm -hmm. and they play this instrument called I think didri, didri do. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. and, and there's a certain uh, beauty to it, mm -hmm. even though it might be a little monotone, mm -hmm. but it's it's the vibration that sends out, and you become kind of like. Wow, I think it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And it's totally different than what the West is used to. Yeah, and there's no judgment here on the level. It's not saying that it has to be in a certain way or this. We're not getting to this. Okay. Uh, the point is, when I said that, uh, because we've uh, studied and, and seen that had this experience with using that to really get people into a certain mindset, in almost like a hypnotizing mm -hmm. through the sound, the repetitive sound. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, if you're using that, you can, like all the things is that you mentioned. Yes, yeah. because there are many. Because yeah. that's kind of repetitive sound, and yeah. it's the, the, the purpose is to make the person just you know, get so annoyed that she will. You don't be, think. Yeah, just don't mm -hmm. think about yeah. anything. Yeah. And the the primitive sounds like uh, maybe the rust. I don't know how to classify those uh, instruments mm -hmm. that you're talking it about. You it has different, has movement, yeah. has, you know, different has melody, yeah. has the, yeah. it, it, it's and a different uh, The feelings come with it, even mm -hmm. if you don't realize the feelings. You and know, the feelings sometimes, here. the feelings of the tribes are a connection to their gods, that's mm -hmm. their yeah. time. Yeah. Time and their moment in the evolution yeah. and everything. So yeah. Because I find, no sometimes I, far, I find more simplicity and beauty in the music than the, maybe some of the contem contemporary modern music, it's just a cacophony of sounds, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a John Cage or something like that, to where you just like, mm -hmm. it's experimental type situation, yeah. I just don't get anything yeah. out of it. But you know, again, the bottom line is what the, the feeling, because if the music is bringing you elevated feelings, that's what it's counting, mm -hmm. right? We're not judging the music or per the se. Or the instrument. Or the instrument per se. Sure. But Luciana mentioned even that, you know, forget the instrument on the other side, you know, you don't even have that need, yeah. but it is the, what you produce that will touch the heart okay. in a positive and good way. The same way that you can be inspired to write literature, in you know, and and write things that will can even cause violence and can cause terror and can cause a bunch of stuff, right? Or you can write things that will inspire people to elevate their thoughts and so on. So in every single piece of art, kind of art, 
we can see those two sides yeah. you know of the, the story or even like you mentioned you know how we can use that in a very positive way to be therapeutic or uh, or really destroy you can build or destroy you know like words like you science know science also you know yeah. just like science it can be it doesn't mean who is developing science is uh, it's not it's not a, a smart person it can be a smart mm -hmm. person but it may be using in a better way yeah, you know right. maybe not morally yeah. developing I mean, you know, the, the, music you the iman that calls the people to prayer mm -hmm. in the tower and, and it can actually be a very be beautiful mm -hmm. song yet i said i don't know what he's talking about yet some people might be drawn to other purposes, maybe you know, war, or whatever, through exactly. that calling. Mm -hmm. So he's an example of something that's beautiful that's yeah. turned maybe yeah. into something yes, else. Now, I think that I want to no, say. I was just thinking uh -huh. about Olodum, for example, you know, Bahia. You uh -huh. you hear the drums. That is that is so beautiful. Yeah. And it's so uh, productive, mm -hmm. and it's 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 godly in my point of view mm -hmm. because you think about all the think about the teenagers and the young kids in Bahia who perhaps did not have a chance to, you know, go mm -hmm. to school or do something productive in their mm -hmm. lives. And then they find the drums mm -hmm. and they, they, they and then they become part of the Olo Doom or that's you know changing. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. So it's not the instrument itself, no. I think. No it's not the drum. Yourself. It's how you use that, you know. Mm -hmm. I personally think drums are beautiful, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah. 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 But you understood, right? When I said the sound, I did it, again. It was not the drum. It is mm -hmm. the kind of uh, rep repetition that caused sometimes drive you crazy. Yeah. So, A some drop of water can do that. Drive you crazy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the tortures. Think about torture, right? In the you know those old, old, well, not even old times, unfortunately, but. You know that, that exactly the, the but drop. But the feeling yes, is important because sometimes we listen a, a drop uh, here, here, a here. drop of uh, water, yeah. and can be inspiring. Yeah. You know, after the rain, just a drop of Something water, and yeah. you can. But after two but hours, but can be very. If you're trying to sleep, yeah. and that is, yeah. you know, yeah. it's yeah. not fun. Andrea, you say. Is that guy's turn now? Can you go back? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, because both me and him, we are like this. Both me and him, we are like this. <laughs> no, basically, we have to be careful about judging what we think is a beautiful music for some, mm -hmm. what is a horrible music for others, because if we Westerns listen to Persian music, we're gonna think that's not music. Yeah. If we listen to Indian Western. music, yeah. okay, how do you call this music? Or the other way around, they listen to our stuff and say, really, you call that music? So, yeah. it's very hard, uh, what is beautiful music for us, mm -hmm. yeah. it needs to be understand for it's us. It's subjective. You know? Yeah. Exactly, it's but very subjective. We're talking about, about, about the earth. Spiritual, we're talking about the spiritual music. Exactly, so we are so. We'll learn so, that one. Exactly, we are so. Uh, so late and so down yet that we have this problem. Yeah. That what is extremely spiritual for us, like Mozart, may not mm -hmm. be for others. And what is extremely spiritual for an Indian, that, you know, they've been a civilization for 5,000 years, or Chinese music, for instance, for well, us sounds not very strange. Right. culture. Yes. Right? Yeah. What we really is yeah. elevated in the spirituality. Yeah. That we'll, we'll see as time comes, right? Right now, we mm -hmm. let's work on our feelings, right? right. Whatever causes, like you said, Adrian said, it is really whatever kind of music, but that thinking of us as spirits to be elevated right whatever that gives us that idea of elevating our spirits it's not a taste of music right. no we're not talking about taste we're talking as it's what really brings us close to god which you know that has a purpose that right. that kind of idea you were saying something oh i just i just had a point uh he was bringing up the uh the fact that uh, the because uh, I I kind of felt responsible for bringing the primitive word into the oh, that's really <laughs> <laughs> I think I think in that matter it would be uh, sp is, um, um, spiritually uh, primitive. For example, if you look um, th throughout the same point that you're you're talking about about the uh, the and Andre 
about the different backgrounds in music. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, some of the traditional uh, monks in, in Asia, um, Buddhist monks, they, uh, they sing on unison in the same note and they chant together one single note for hours. Oh man. And we, it's just that, that they believe that the whole universe vibrates in a, in a same uh, a frequency mm -hmm. that's being generated through that um sound that they do when they're chanting. Mm -hmm. So in that matter, that is a very, very evolved music because if you, are, if you are analyze through a, a spiritist uh, point of view, that, would, that type of music, they found one note that would represent everything and they would gather it in, in this funnel, concentrate, channeled a type of music that generates just one note and that's all the music they need. And there's a connection. There's a connection to it. So a trance. Exactly, yeah. exactly induces a trance. So yeah. if, you, if you look to that you know, point of view, um, a more evolved, how could music evolve to a certain extent that would be just basically put out there through one note? But then That's we'll a know, lot of evolution. Well, no, and we are really in, the, as pure spirits, if that is the most evolved That's or right. not, right? Right now, what we are, we, for them, uh, or for the aborigines, or mm -hmm. for the it is what brings us close to God, right? Yeah. For us, when we put that music there, you know, you know, at least for me, you know, that why we're here and quietly and we listen to that. If, you know, if I'm in a party and having a rock and roll, that's one thing. But if I'm trying to connect and get my passes and having my, you know, that there's another kind of music that I'm that's looking true. for. So it's a matter of here when you talk about art and, and spiritism and getting closer to God, that's the kind of thing we're... So just to put things in perspective, that's why we're not judging the music or the taste or any, any of this, or the paintings. Mm -hmm. Talk about paintings. Like how subjective can be? We look and say, oh, what is that, you know? The other person, ah, how wonderful, you know? Some others want to be experts, so they start analyzing, it doesn't mean a thing, but, you know? <laughs> so, but it is, if you look at that's pretty. Makes a connection. That's makes true, that yeah. connection, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that one note, or, uh, you know, the theater or the opera, you go to an opera, some people are like, oh, gosh. And all the to be able to see, well, whatever that can give us that sense, either for the consolation side, you know, you're going through something and sometimes that you hear, I don't know, music from your childhood. And sometimes that's what it does, the trick. It takes you, oh, you know what, you feel so good about it, right? And what it's not even that kind of music. The connection. The connection. And what it works for, like, you probably music works pretty good you know for me painting i'm visual it needs to be painting or something that i look uh -huh. around me look for a theater may touch her better mm -hmm. so i think whatever it works better for each of us whatever links to you exactly yeah. and, you know and, and the beauty is god gave us choices, choices right i mean it's not like one kind one right. does it it is ways that and again like you said at the beginning uh, just for us to conclude uh, uh, for the, 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 the thing that really matters for us is to understand how the, there is the art, that God, the representation of beauty for us is everywhere, right? In the middle of a war, somebody can try to find a way, that's the escape, the need that we have to look at sadness at sad times to find a way to get out of it, to, um, to have the hope, to have that sense of still progressing in the middle of anything that we will go through. And that beauty uh, can be, imagine you're in the middle of destruction, you see a bird, or you see, like uh, you were talking yeah. about, you see, you hear the bird even, can be it, you know? In, uh some concentration camp during World War II, the Nazis allowed uh, some violin players to play music mm -hmm. because not only did they sue the prisoners, but they also sued 
the, yes, the Nazis. He, he liked, he liked yeah, they would keep the order. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, we want to thank Luciana for this yeah. beautiful yeah. We always want to place like said, you know, one of the main points of lecture is to make people think and yeah. So I think I did. I did. And you did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see, Bobby, first time.